go through my thoughts on, on the performance itself, um, the result and where I think it leads us going into the next few weeks and still the manager situation. Um, first and foremost, I want to address something. There were some comments made about Steve's video yesterday about the uh, amount of swearing. Um, listen, you know, it might not be everybody's cup of tea, but I'm not going to ask a grown man to, you know, keep in line with it, especially when he's getting his point across. Um, I understand it might not be everybody's cup of tea, like I said, but at the end of the day, I respect the fact that he's taking his own time to come on to do a video. Now, he's obviously very upset and passionate about what he believes in his own opinion is happening at the football club at the moment. And um, he has every right to voice his opinion, as does every paying customer that's a fan of the club. Um, however, listen, if you've got a different opinion to him, that's fine. You know, But when it gets personal and you start more or less saying things about certain people that comes from rather from a football point of view, it's more of a personal opinion and a dig at somebody, you know, just because you're sat behind a computer or on your phone, you think you're, that you're going to be, um, you're not going to have any consequences, you know, unfortunately now, if people will be personal, abusive towards people, you know, we're just going to block them, it's as simple as that, because, you know, listen, I'm all for people having different opinions. There were different opinions about all nearly, nearly all the videos from yesterday. You know, I might not agree with them all, but I respect them that they've come forward and said their own opinion, but they weren't personal towards that person that was coming on. When you start becoming personal, you know, it's it's not a good look and we'll just block you as simple as that. Take your comments elsewhere. And, you know, looking through people's channels, the, the things that they've said before, it's the same things, the, the same, like, derogatory things saying towards people before. I'm not going to say which is because they're not going to be on channel any longer. Um, but just a reminder to those people that do come on and comment, just be, just think that those people that have come on have volunteered their own time after a game, you know, and, you know, it's an instant reaction as well. So they're, they're upset, you know, they're upset to what's going on at the football club, as we all are, um, you know, and I'm upset with what's going on. Um, and some people swear, some people don't, you know, that's life, you know. Again, you know, obviously there are young kids that do watch this channel and we're obviously really grateful for that. Um, and, you know, he said to me afterwards, he said, you know, I'm sorry if I, if I swore too much, but, you know, Steve is somebody that has only got good intentions. He doesn't obviously mean to offend people if he does swear, you know. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to sit here and say to him before, don't swear it. I'm going to, because that would be Steve being unauthentic. That would be indifferent to what he actually is as a person. And I don't want to censor people. It's the freedom of speech. People can say what they want in our channel. You know, the world's getting to, you can't say this, you can't say that. On our channel, people can say what they want, obviously, in in the right frame. And obviously, in the right, you know, you know, if there are things that are said that are out of order, then obviously we'll address it. But, you know, he didn't say anything that were out of order that were personal against anybody else. He was just calling what he's seen at the football club in his own opinion, which is what it's all about. If everyone had the same opinion, it'd be boring. And if everybody had the same personality, it'd be boring as well. So just a reminder to people, just to be courteous of the people that do come on, because we're giving you content because we feel like it's, you know, it, you deserve it. Um, so I thought I just needed to nip that, nip that in the bud because it was frustrating to see, you know, because, he, you know, he speaks a lot of sense to Steve. You know, I agree with a lot that he says. Not everybody does, like I said, but I respect that. I respect that. Um, but don't be personal about it. There's no need for it. If you've got a problem, say it to his face, same as me. If you've got a problem about me, say it to my face. Don't say it behind a keyboard and type it on, on a phone. It's a coward thing to do that. Say it to me first if you've got an issue, you know. And listen, you can all have different opinions about me and also have different opinions about the channel, but it's all right to, to do it and be a keyboard warrior, you know, when it's personal. But if it's about football, that's fine. You're more than welcome to come on the channel. But look, listen, there'll be zero tolerance policy from now on. If anybody's personal in any opinion, you're just going to get blocked. It's as simple as that. And I'm all for banter. I'm all for having jokes and laughs and this, that and the other. I'm all for that. People know me by now that watch this channel know where I'm about. You know, I'm all, you know, I'm I'm all for that. I'm always joking, but it's never personal. I, I say a lot of jokes about Conway, but it's never aimed at him like in a derogatory way. You know, like it, as if I want him any any ill will to be wished towards him. It's just like, it's just a bit of light out of banter just to probably soften what's going on at the moment. So, you know, just be mindful of that, guys. Um, in the future and obviously those people that you know they did make that comment they'll not be watching the channel again you can watch it but you won't be able to comment so you, listen you reap what you sow you say things out of order you get treated like that you know it's uh it's as simple as that um and it, it shouldn't be like that 
you know, we should be people should be able to come on and not say what they feel when it's personal abuse. Some people go, well, you're in a public forum, you're gonna get personal abuse. Well, listen, I'm, I, I don't, I don't tolerate that. Don't tolerate that. Don't tolerate that form of you know things that were being accused, you know, accused towards Steve. It wasn't fair. Steve doesn't come on the channel, so you know he doesn't watch the videos, so it's not going to affect him. But it affects me, and it sets a precedent that the you know people keep thinking they they can say what they want about people and not have any consequences. They just keep doing it, so that's why I've never tinted bud and um, ask Neil just to remove that user, and it's going to happen for everyone else. I'm sorry, you know, it might be quite harsh, but it's as simple as that. Um, doesn't matter what the context of it were, but it's the way that it was said, and it's the way that it was, you know, you know, it came across that I, I don't agree with and I don't accept. So anyway, that out of the way, we'll talk about Sheffield United from yesterday. Um, so you know, three to defeat, disappointing. Except for the final twenty minutes, I actually were quite pleased what I saw the last twenty minutes. We'll get to the comments that uh, Devante Cole said to the media, which does say a lot about the situation. Um, hinting things again. Um, so I think first half, I think it were pretty even. I thought they had the more concrete chances than us in first half. Moussa, who eventually got two goals, had a really good chance in the first half that he should have buried. And he went straight to Collins. I felt that defensively, it was one of those things that we were like, we pulled off a really good tackle, but then we were all over the shop at the same time. There's no consistency at the back. Even in a forty-five minute period, um, I felt Helic felt looked decent at first half. His pace, I think that's something in January if he goes, which I, I probably will expect to happen. Um, I hope he doesn't, of course. But you know, I think he's going to be one of the players that's identified to leave. Um, we need a bit of pace at back because we're very slow. You know, we get turned quite a lot. Um, the formation again. You know, I knew that Sheffield United would have Baldock and uh, Stevens, Ender Stevens on either side overlapping, and they'd utilised us, our, our wing backs, you know, not getting forward, um, or getting forward and not coming back, or being just being positionally unaware. Um, Styles and Britain were exploited time and time again in both halves defensively. Um, like I've said before, I, I'd rather have four at the back and have a solid base to work from. Um, if you can't employ that two wing back system, we keep getting exploited all the time. So um, for me, that needed to be addressed, but it weren't. But at nil nil at half time, I thought, you know, it's an all right half. I felt that we grew into the game a little bit. I were impressed with Victor. Again, his end product wasn't there, but listen, he tried. That's all you can ask of him. And, you know, his goals to game ratio, you know, his, how many games out of the football club, I don't know. And the goals return is obviously a lot lower than that. But he tries, and um, I do appreciate that. And for me, he's not championship standard. That's my opinion. Um, however, he gave 100% yesterday when he were on. And you could see that the fans were frustrated when he got subbed, which says a lot about, you know, what we thought of Victor's performance. We, we you know, we credited that performance and we, we, we clapped that. And I were quite pleased with his performance. I, 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 think he's a, I think he's a striker that needs to use his size more. He's a big fella. And he, and he used that more yesterday, and I want to see that more often. Be a battering ram, you know. Sometimes you've got to be ugly. You've got, you, you've got to get. You've got to put your body about. You know, we can't be all nicey nicey. And I think too many times this season we've been too nicey nicey, and um, we've got to be a bit more light. Gets getting stuck in, and I so I appreciated that. And I think yesterday we did more of that, um, but we still weren't enough to win game. Nil nil into the second half. I felt that. Um, they obviously started stronger. They probably had a rocket up the arse at half time, got a goal ten minutes into the second half. Game management again into you know, you wanna you wanna keep things tight for ten first fifteen, twenty minutes. Cause they probably in their standards they probably couldn't have played any worse. And I've seen a lot better Sheffield United sides at Oakwell in the past few years, I will say that. However, they got the job done in terms of getting the three points and also those three goals in such a short space of time, I think, killed the result. Even though we got two goals back, which was a good response from the lads. Um, I think the game as, as a whole, we, we, you know, we, we, those goals in such a short space of time took the game away from us in essence. The goals themselves, so easy. Um, Moose, you know what he's going to do. You know, again, we, we looked like it were all, we were all over the place for, for all three of those goals. Defensively, they just cut us open, just we ease. They seem to be a bit quicker than us, which I don't understand. You know, they might be better technically, 
a quality of player, but I don't understand why they look fitter than us, look just a little bit sharper than us at times defensively. But then that goes to his back line not being very quick, which is something I think needs to be addressed regardless who leaves or comes in. In January, I think we need a bit of pace at the back and have another option there. Um, first goal, Moose cuts inside. You know where it's going. You know, he's trying to whip it around and it's a great finish, let's be honest. Um, and again, Eds have gone straight away. Uh, there were some fans in front of me that's left at 1-0. Um, and then the second goal comes in and it's just a case of Moose wanting it more than uh, our defender. I don't know if it was Styles or Kitchen. But um, he just wanted it more. And you could see it's going to be clipped at back post. And um, he just wanted it more. He just wanted it more. It's as simple as that. And it's a good finish. But again, so easy. So easy. Um, third goal. Osborne, again, he's had so much time to get that shot away in the area when he shouldn't have been allowed to do so. And it, again, it's a decent finish. Collins couldn't really do anything about it. We all had defenders in front of him. But um, so easy. Very under 15 under 15s esque I will say and that's not me being harsh I think that we were very um we were very soft defensively at times yesterday but I thought also I thought we looked okay I thought um kitchen defensively looked okay but going forward I think his distribution needs to be better Styles and Britain had off games yesterday again Styles is a shadow of the player that he were last season even even when Struber introduced him I won at first people that said that Styles is going to be a player when we were performing poorly and struggling under Struber, I said, we need to be playing him more and getting him integrated into the first team. And there is a player there, but he looks he looks fed up. I mean, I was sat in East Stand, unfortunately. Uh, not mocking East Stand, but I should be in West Stand. Um, and he just looked fed up. Body language, he just looks absolutely fed up. And uh, Britain same. Going forward, in first half in particular, it was very easy to see that we had the space on the right-hand side, width-wise, and you just weren't gambling until two or three seconds later and their defence has already regrouped. And it's a matter of small, minute differences in football. And that little bit of confidence and that bit of self-esteem, having that in yourself, is the difference between gambling and going forward or being tentative and holding back because you don't believe in your own ability. Crossing were appalling from both, both flanks yesterday, I'm going to be honest. In so, you know, last five minutes, we had so many opportunities to get that ball in the box. And Britain was out late yesterday. I agree with Luke. And we wasted so many good opportunities. There were one where I think we built up the play well and he was on the overlap and he just absolutely smashed it. No intention of having a look up and just definitely putting a chip in or, you know, and, you know, yes, last last season, sorry, he were complete opposite player, especially for six, seven months. I think back end of last season, he dipped. Um, which every player does, every player's a dip in form, but it's just been every game, he just looks, he, his confidence is shattered, and I, I, you know, the day that he scores a goal, I'll buy a lottery lottery ticket, because again, he had a really decent opportunity, and it's just gone into, you know, upper tiers at Ponty end at back, and, um, you know, he's not only one, I think Elliot played okay in first half, but he's not the same player that he were last season, people are going to question players that he's playing where you're not as good, um, but I also just question the self-esteem is, you know, they're not doing the same things that they were last season. Sibic, I thought that he improved last season, but he's gone backwards again. Maybe because Solbao was not there, I felt that he had a massive impact on Sibic's development.